Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Uh, welcome back on uh, Isabel's talk show. And uh, today, my guest is uh, Tammy Defoe. So welcome, Tammy. It's your first time on Isabel's talk show, but not the last one, I hope. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to enjoy all the tips you're going to uh, give us today. So before we start uh, with this um, powerful uh, topic, I want to introduce my guest. So Tammy Defoe is based in Toronto in Canada. She's got two cats and when she's not working, she enjoys spending time with family and friends, watching and reading the news, watching TV, shows, movies, and exercising. She founded GT, um, GTA Preneurs three years ago and has helped over 100 entrepreneurs grow their businesses. She's an expert trainer and coach in all areas she specializes in, bringing decades of successful experience and education to the coaching relationship. Today, to date, she has hosted over 50 business networking events, in addition to private business coaching, leading several referral groups and working as the business development and project manager for GTA Preneurs and its web website services department. <laughs> so welcome, uh, Tammy. Welcome to uh, Isabel's talk show. I'm so happy to, uh, to have you on board. And I know that today you're going to give us some steps, like seven steps to business success. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me, Isabel, first of all. It's great to be here. And you probably wonder, when do I sleep, right? Well, <laughs> I don't have any kids. So, you know, I kind of, you know, that's my extra time happens with the, with the extra stuff. But, you know, I love what I do. I love helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses. It's very exciting for me. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad to be here today to give everybody some tips. So seven steps to business success, uh, regardless of the business. Uh, of course, if you have a brick and mortar store, then that's going to be a little bit more complicated, but a lot of the same principles apply. So very happy to be here. Uh, yeah. To share this with you. Fantastic. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Let me just do a screen share here. Uh-huh. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to give you the, uh, the access. Oh, you got it. Oh, it's that's good. Fine. It's already, yeah, it's already ready to go here. Fantastic. Uh, yep. Let me get this thing out of my way here. Okay. So seven steps to sales success, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. My, uh, okay. So the first step is going to be target market. Well, actually, before I should go back a little bit more before, before target market, I forgot about something. So really, first of all, you need to have an idea for your business, right? You need to have an idea and it has to be something that you enjoy doing because especially in the first few years of your business, you're going to be spending a lot of hours running your business, as you probably know. As well. <laughs> and with our new website, we're launching tonight, actually, right? That uh, we'll tell you guys about in a bit, right? It's 100 hours. I put in. So think about my weekends and my evenings for the last month, but you know what? It's going to be worth it. I'm going to be really happy for everyone to, to visit that. So uh, the point is, is that you do need to do something you enjoy. Uh, once it's doing that, you need to do market research about, you know, who else is out, out there who's doing what you're doing? Like, is there a demand for it? Are people willing to pay for it? Right. And you see that, oh, lots of other people are doing it. Now, how can I make it different? Mm -hmm. How can I try to make it better? Right. And if nobody's doing it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad idea, right? It could be not a good idea, but maybe you're, if you're inventing something brand new, right? I mean, at one point in time, there was no such thing as Netflix. Exactly. It was, we go to the, we go to the movie store, movie. which uh -huh. I actually like going to the movie store, right? Friday night, you go there, you search around with the people say hi, when you walk in the door, and, uh -huh. right? <laughs> but someone came up. So there's, you know, some things happen that there could be something new, but, uh, you know, in general, it's, um, you know, you're probably going to do something that says someone else has has done, at least in a small part, and, you know, try to put your own twist on it, right? So as you're doing that, you have to start to think about, you know, who are the people who are most likely going to buy what you have to offer? You can see, yeah, this is a really popular service, whether it be financial services, people need investments, they need insurance, right? Or in a mortgage, you know, or they need nutritional help, and they need coaching, right? Mm -hmm. But no... They seem like small fields, but these are actually still really big fields, right? And there is only so many hours of the day, even if you don't sleep a lot, right? So, um, you know, the people who take the approach of, you know, I'm going to help everybody are the least successful, honestly. So you really do need to hone down who is your target market, right? Mm -hmm. So think about, 
you know, the age group, like gender, if that matters, does income level matter, does education level matter, family status, like whether they're single, married, have kids, no kids, do they have medical conditions, is that applicable, you know, what are their interests, mm-hmm. all the different things you need to consider, right, so right now, if, and it doesn't matter how long you've been in business right now, because if this is something where you want to grow your business further, mm-hmm. I recommend right now taking a piece of paper and a pen and writing down what is the age the age range, you would say. So for example, someone who's 20 has different interests and different things they spend their money on than someone who's 50. Yeah, okay. totally. Yeah, right. Different so you think you see, right. So you think you see I can help everybody, but it's not just about you in business. It's about your customer. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter how much you think you're great and how much you want to give to people. It's about the other people and what they're willing to spend their money on. Right. So think about that right now. And, you know, I said, you only have so many hours. So what you want to do, you want to focus, you want to focus your advertising and your direct prospecting, which we'll talk about in a minute on that specific target market, because it's going to increase your chances of success. Mm-hmm. Right. Say, for example, let's say you, you, you do a health product. Okay. Some sort of health product that you say can help everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. But someone who's 20, most people in general are much healthier. They're not worrying about wrinkles or anything like that, you know, or, or whatever, (laughs) renting aging. Right. But maybe, maybe one out of a hundred, maybe would, would buy what you have to offer. Okay. But maybe if it's something like, you know, rejuvenation for your skin, for your joints and things like that. That's something more people in their like fifties and sixties are thinking about. So maybe out of those people, you have like 30 out of a hundred who would be willing to pay for it. Okay. So what's more worth your time to try to find the one in a hundred or one in a thousand who might, right. Or the 30 out of a hundred. So we'll three out of 10 or five out of 10, right? So you want to be really specific and then focus your efforts on those ones. And also when you're coming up with your advertising, right? So whether it be like graphics on social media or your website, you want it to reflect your target market. People want to see themselves in that experience, right? So you want to see if, let's say if it is an anti-wrinkle cream, you want to see a before and after picture of a person in your target market. Oh, look at the difference, you know? Uh, Let's go back to financial services for a minute. So, you know, as an, I used to be a financial advisor, by the way. So I I use this example uh, many times and so you could say, okay, I want to help families with small children. And yeah. then you're focusing on things like, uh, you know, continuing to grow your RSP, sign up for an RESP, right? Get that education about, you know, why you get an RESP or, or our RSP, should, your TFSA should do, you know, right? And then people need insurance compared mm-hmm. to somebody who maybe some other advisors, they want to focus on, here, hang on, that's my cat. Hey, don't do that. Sorry, you were wrong. <laughs> Pardon me. I have also a bottle for my cats. Um, I was going to say. Uh, right. So then, um, uh, sorry about the distraction there for a second. And more distracted me than, than you guys, probably. Um, right. So then some other advisor may say, okay, I want to focus on estate planning. Different target market. They're still a financial advisor. They can still do insurance and investments, but estate planning is different. Now you're focused on, okay. I want to be able to leave the maximum amount of money to my family after mm-hmm. I go, right? I want to minimize taxes, you know, and, and that's so that they can get the most, right? And what's the best way? So that's important to really specialize and get to be known as the go-to person mm-hmm. for that particular thing, right? And so on your website, you want to have older people if you're estate planning and you want to have families, small children. So really know, uh, narrow down your target market. Same thing too, as a real estate agent, maybe you want to focus on people that uh, want to just buy luxury homes, or maybe some want to do first-time home buyers, or someone I want to do, I know a real estate agent who focuses on, on downsizers, right? So people who are, um, you know, pre-retirees and they've had this huge house because they had their kids or whatever, and, and now they don't need it. And it's too much to keep cleaning it and going up and down the stairs. So you want to find your niche, another way to put it. Okay. Yeah. So before you do that, so that once you have that down, you know what you want to do, you know, you like it. So you can put the hours in and you know who you need to go after. Right. So another part of the beginning, which I probably should have put a few extra steps in the beginning there um, is uh, yeah. Making sure you have the resources, you know, learning from a coach like myself, what is, are the best marketing strategies for your particular type of business? Cause they're not all the same. Some people, you do great business just on Instagram. Some people mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, some people, a person at your, you know, community center or something like that. Right. 
Um, well, once again, it depends on your audience. You have to uh, check what application they use or what uh, communication method they use. So absolutely, you're hundred percent right on that. Exactly. Some people spend all their day on Instagram. Some people spend it all on Facebook, right? Some people, if your demographic is older, mm -hmm. then maybe they spend their time at the library, yeah. right? Or a community center, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe that because the, sometimes like they prefer in person versus mm -hmm. just everything virtual. So you do have to figure out how can I reach these people? Or maybe you're a person like a financial advisor who can help a lot of people, but you enjoy fishing. And mm -hmm. that's the other part of target market, not just about who's most likely to buy. Yes, absolutely. However, it's also about businesses, about starting that conversation, the mm -hmm. relationship building part of it. So, the, you know, the connection. The connection. The connection. right, exactly. Right. So, you know, if you like fishing and you join a fishing club, right or a hunting club or a golf club or whatever and you get to know the people mm -hmm. right that's your target market right yeah. you know you get to build those relationships and stuff like that so anyways think about those different things it's you know once you're down there now you're like okay you're ready to execute the plan the mm -hmm. other stuff is all about the planning now executing the plan you want to get a crm yeah what yeah. is a crm customer, customer relations management Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right, exactly. So what does that mean? So basically, at the very root of it, it's a database where you're going to store all the information about your prospects and clients. Typically, the CRMs will uh, sync with your email account and your phone account, right? So that way, the whole point, one of the points is that you can keep a track of all the communications you've had with these people because nobody is going to remember everything it's impossible right i mean forget about what you did last week the month before but i mean some people don't remember what they did this morning okay so exactly. <laughs> right it's probably half a, you know you and me right at one point or the other so you know what you have the crm so that way all the emails you can read the history and after your meet you know, we'll go into meetings i won't say the meetings right now but you want to have that syncing there uh also typically on the crm you can have the app on your phone you call mm -hmm. the person and then afterwards it says you want to make a note about it always make a note right same idea people call you they're in your crm it's going to be the same concept oh it's going to mark the date and the time right but the crm is even more than that uh most crms you can do email marketing through them mm -hmm. right email marketing is so important and do not spam people though right and you don't want to also put people in that you've never had contact with before because that's just spam okay yeah. but you know to me if you go to an event you meet 30 people in that right and then you know typically you want to reach out to people individually right but you know uh, in my view it's fair enough to put the people into your crm that you've met them before hey it was great to meet you at the event sort of thing right and that and uh you know you it was you really should i really ask them you know would you like to be on our email marketing list right when people come to our events they came to our events so of course i'm going to send them our email marketing because you know they want to keep knowing when the next event is right but you have to figure out make sure you're not spamming people because then you can turn them off and you don't want to be too frequent either, right? Like I probably- how often, how often do you think it should be? Once a week, twice a week? No, once or twice a month. Ah, okay. Yes. Like, I don't know if, if anyone, yourself or anyone here have had the experience where you're like, oh, this is really interesting. Yeah, I'll put my email to sign up for it. And all of a sudden you get like three emails per oh. day. I oh, know. You know what? By day two, I'm like unsubscribed. Yeah. I, I, I'm the same. Uh, yeah. uh, I get overwhelmed and I'm just like, I don't have time to read. So what's the point? Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's just overkill. So be careful about that. Some people say that's what people want. No, they don't. Mm. They don't. It's just be something that, you know, it's at the top of the mind and it also mm -hmm. shouldn't be always buy this, buy this. It should be something of value. Right. Mm -hmm. So give them some free advice. Oh, yeah. and or know this is what's going on in the, you know, field or whatever recently. Um, right. But then, and your but CRM can do even more than that. A lot of CRMs, you can send a, um, a quote through there. You mm -hmm. can send an invoice through there. Right. But this is your foundation where you're going to keep all of your information, right. That you need. Okay. So let's go on to the next step. Prospecting. Okay. Yeah. So this part here is where I, I, I always teach people, uh, you go to them and they go to you. So the part of it is like when you're doing the advertising, let's say you're putting out social media posts, right? Or if you do paid ads, which I recommend not, you know, avoiding if possible, or use the other message first, or you have your website with SEO so people can find you, uh, you know, you have your profile on LinkedIn. Those are all, they come to you strategies, which you want to have, 
You mm-hmm. want to put yourself on there. People see you. Oh yeah, look at this person. They great posts. This is interesting. They're knowledgeable, things like that. You want to have that. Yeah. But it's not enough. Uh-huh. It's not enough. Okay. Um, <laughs> for, for what most of us do. Now, if you're Apple, okay, right? Yeah. Or you don't, need to. you don't need to call anyone on the phone and say, hey, come on in for a meal or come in and buy uh-huh. their iPhone. You know, you they know who you are. You put out your advertising, the greatest new product, and they they go. Okay. Mm-hmm. But for most of us here, we're in the relationship um, you know, based businesses that we do need to combine the putting stuff out there for people can come to us and then we have to go directly. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is where knowing your target market is going to be crucial. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, figuring out where these people spend their time, is it a specific digital platform? Is it, you know, the people that you've come with at the the golf club, right. Or or people at your place of worship that not, you're not necessarily promoting your business, but they may just say, Hey, what do you do? What do you do? Right. Um, I know uh, when I was working as a financial advisor, there was an advisor there who he started volunteering and he didn't go around promoting his business. But again, inevitably people say, well, what do you do for your work? What do you do for work? And he told them, and after a couple of years, he's got like more than enough business coming in. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and you know, that happened to be the, his demographic that he was, you know, kind of going after the, those types of people who had those needs. Um, yeah. So then, you know, and then, so for the prospecting here, um, is where you want to do that direct outreach though. Like for example, for me, I spend most of my time on LinkedIn and Facebook, right? Okay. Of course, myself being in the over 45 category, right? We, um, we kind of the more, uh, Facebook's known as the older social media, right? I have no yeah. problems with that, right? Uh, yeah. So, you know, whatever works, it, I find Facebook's a great place to do business, but some people, they like Instagram, right? And if your target market's people under 30, then you probably want to spend a lot of time on Instagram, exactly, even under 35. Uh, yeah, it was just so my friend yesterday, and she's 38, and she's canceled her Facebook account a long time ago, and she only uses she only uses Instagram, right? So again, knowing your target market, uh, yeah. So then, you know, what you want to do is you want to come up with a basic script, right? That's something that uh, you know is going to always something that's going to greet the person first. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great weekend and that, right? And you you have to make it about something valuable for them. If you just say, "Hey, I'm awesome. You need to buy my product." You know what I do? I just delete. I don't even bother with it, right? So you, right. So you have to do something that's mutually beneficial, right? So I always do that, right? And I'll say, you know, um, you know, hey, I'm looking for someone to, to do the, this kind of thing, right? And then, you know, would, I would like to connect with you, right? And then they do or they don't. And sometimes they connect and they say they say something, or sometimes they just connect. They don't say something, and then I have a follow up. I do, right? But I do personal. So mm-hmm. I know some people out there. There's like robot things you can use with LinkedIn. And, and all that, right? But, you know, I uh, personally, you know, I mean, it, it, if it works for your business, absolutely do it. Absolutely do it, right? But for me, you know, with my business, especially like I use it for our referral groups, typically, yeah. because we only have one spot per profession in each of our groups. Mm-hmm. So if I'm only looking for one, one commercial insurance agent, right? I mean, you know, I, I do it manually. I just do it manually. I said, you know, looking for someone to send referrals to. So if you're interested in getting referrals, this is what I specialize in, right? Our referral groups, uh, you know, and we do. I send referrals to my clients, the other group members, they send referrals and they'll just say, you know, I'm happy to make your acquaintance. And then they, uh, you know, again, they accept, right? They say something, I'll say, oh, thank you for connecting, right? Uh, you know, I host these referral groups where we send each other referrals throughout the week and we meet weekly. Would you be interested in uh, learning more about that? Sure. Okay, perfect. You know, do you have time for a video call next week? You know, so this is going to go to um, uh, our, uh, think about it's a multi-step, multi-touch approach. So a touch is going to be anytime someone uh, has experience with your business, whether they see a, you know, a post from you, they get your email marketing, you see them at an event, you know, you meet them in person, whatever. So typically it takes multiple touch points before someone's going to decide to become your client. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so then this is, uh, you know, so that's why you follow this. So if you think, great, you know, the first time and you just try to sell, 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 you're going to push people away. Do not do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You go to a networking event in person, right. Don't try to sell them on the spot. Just, you know, give them a little bit, a little bit of taste Mm -hmm. of what you do. Right. And And find and find out what they need because you might be selling something they don't need, or maybe they didn't think about it. So, uh, creating the interest really and giving value 
hundred percent. Yeah. You nailed the, uh, you hit the nail on the head there, Isabel with, again, it's not just about you trying to promote your business. You do need to say, is this person qualified to be my client? Right. Because not everybody is, is it? Not everybody's interested. Maybe they already, their sister does this. So they're never going to go with you no matter how good you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Or maybe they just, they don't have the need for it. And I know myself and probably other people out there, you know, we've gone to a meeting and then they do some pitch that's like every other pitch they do with every other person. Right. So that's the other thing you have to think about. Right. Is that, you know, asking the other person questions. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, oh, first of all, tell me about your business. Right. Entrepreneurs love to talk about their businesses. Right. And so then, uh, you know, you want to get those details, especially if you're B2B. Yeah. Again, you're seeing that we, is the service I have or the products I have is that, you know, the person even has a need for it. Right. Uh, and then. Yeah. So let's go next to the next point here. And there, honestly, I probably could have put this into like 20 points to sales or business success, but <laughs> I'm trying to simplify it for people. Um, okay. So let's say now you're at the step where the person agrees to have a meeting, right? And I do recommend to, to make it mutual, right? Yeah. Where, you know, uh, why don't we, you know, get to know each other better, see how we'd be able to help each other out, right? You know, or let's say if it's financial planner, you know, you say, would you like to have a meeting? I can do a, you know, complimentary, uh, you know, kind of assessment of what you're doing now, right? And, and see if, you know, I could do something better, or maybe you're already doing something good, right? And would you like to, you know, to do that? So make, you know, ask the other person, don't try to force it on them, right? And, and you know, just try to have them as an open mind. And then they don't feel, they don't feel pressure. They feel, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're with them, you're building a relationship more, and then you can, you know, um, go from there. So the next stage here is going to be preparation. So it's going to be what you do before your meetings. And, you know, we're all super busy. So, you know, sometimes we forget about this part, right? And, but it's important to look at their website. If, if, you're, if your client is a business to business, look at their website, look at their LinkedIn profile, look at their Facebook, their Instagram or whatever. And if they're not a business owner, still look at all their profiles. You try to have a little bit of a background, right? And then from your previous conversation, you know, try to get in your mind in advance. What type of client do I think this person could be, mm -hmm. right? Like for myself, you know, does this person express interest in um, having us, you know, do a website for them? Or did the person express interest in being a guest speaker at one of our events? That's yeah. why when you meet the person, you kind of ask them some questions. Oh, mm -hmm. you've ever been a guest speaker before. Yeah, right. And then you kind of know in advance before you go into meeting that these are probably the things I think are going to, you know, be good for them, right? And get that background. But then you do obviously need to ask some questions, you know what I mean, while you're in the meetings to, um, to, you know, to do that. Uh, so that's the meetings that comes up there. Now for the meetings, uh, again, it's got to be a mutual situation right here and you want to find common ground as well. So before you start going into what you do, I recommend just having some general conversation. Yes, I agree. Right? When, I, exactly. when, I worked, uh, when I worked in sales, I would always ask people, as you were saying before, ask <laughs> them about the weekend, uh, ask them about uh, the family. I remember one of my clients mm -hmm. telling me how stressed out he was because he was preparing with his wife, his daughter's wedding. And every time I would ring him and I would just say, hey, how is it going? And uh, so we create that relationship that connection you could actually uh, tell me everything and just complain and that was fine yeah yeah exactly yeah so exactly so get that social thing going just like you said right and you know ask about the weather ask about what's going on if there's some big thing you know let's say there's some parade going on hey did you make it to the parade this weekend and that's exactly right? sports sports yeah. events as well hey you support yeah. such a team how did they do this weekend Absolutely. Exactly. So it gets so, you know, knowing, so they know that you actually care about them as a person. It's mm -hmm. not just about, you know, if you're trying to sell them something. Um, and also while you're doing that, you're actually collecting information. Mm -hmm. If you say, oh, what'd you get for this weekend? Right. Oh, I took my family to the, to the zoo. Oh, really? Oh, family. Uh, how many kids do you have? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're a financial advisor, for example, which again, I go to that. Um, oh, wow. So maybe these people need some insurance or maybe they need uh -huh. RESPs, right? Because you collected that data. So it is important for those two reasons of, you know, people find that, oh, yeah, we have something in common, right? You know, and the person cares about me, right? But you're also, again, getting information that when you want to position how what you can do can help them, you know, you can say, oh, well, you know, this would be good for, you know, your kids to get free government money, right? 20% add on. I mean, you never get a better rate of return than that, you know? So uh, think about uh, that stage of it. And, you know, again, then once you're, you're at that stage, then you want to say, okay, well, you know, this is what I do. Right. And I think that, you know, this could help you in this way. 
right? You know, have you ever thought about this before doing this? Mm-hmm. You know, so I find it's always better to, again, ask them the questions and then have them think about themselves and have them come up with a decision themselves. Yes. If they feel you're forcing it on them, it's mm-hmm. just going to turn them off, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're presenting it in a certain way, and then if you did a good job, they're going to say, well, how much does that cost? True. Right. Uh, and, but it's still, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that the meeting is the end of it. They say yes, or they say no, not necessarily. Some people really like to take their time to think about stuff. So they may say, well, you know, send me more information about that. And oh, yeah, not a, not a problem. So this is where you want to actually have some sort of brochure that you can send to somebody after a meeting, right? The person may want to send the information before they meet with you too, and that's fine. But definitely have something prepared. Uh, but don't say something like, oh, I have a 10 minute video I want you to watch. Hmm. nobody has time for that right and for also <laughs> ask also ask them right i've had people just say oh i got this a uh, thing i want you to watch well that's yeah. nice you want me to watch that how about asking me you know hey would you be interested in watching this 10 minute video mm-hmm. you're probably getting a better result in the second one than the first one mm-hmm. okay uh and again if you push too much it's going to make people just want to avoid you completely which is the last thing you want to do as a business person right mm-hmm. um okay good so then Again, the person at the meeting, they may say yes right away, or they, again, they may say, let me think about it, tell me more information. So that's when you want to do a follow-up, mm-hmm. right? If you haven't heard from the person in, you know, definitely in a week, maybe in a few days, but definitely in a week and say, hey, you know, did you have a chance to read the information I sent you? You know, do you have any questions about that? You know, are you interested in, in getting this, right? And it might just been the fact they've been super busy and they were interested, but if you don't follow up, mm-hmm. you could yeah. totally lose that. Totally, yeah. right? And, and and everything you've done before, then it's not worth it because you haven't followed up and people have uh, forgotten you. So uh, yeah. yeah, you need to get back and just say, hey, by the way, do you remember we met such a time? So uh, uh, are you still interested? Is there anything else you uh, you need uh, information wise or yeah, do the follow yeah. up. Exactly, and, and, yeah. And in and the same know- way, in the same way, the people feel like you are really interested. And it's not selling for selling. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, um, some people think that, uh, you know, like following up is, you know, too much, but it's in a certain, you know, certain way you do it. I recommend not waiting longer than a week unless a person said they're going on vacation. I know I've had the experience in the last year and the person had something I I was interested in. Right. But I'm like, uh, oh, let me think about it. And the person never followed up with me. And I'm like, if that person would have followed up with me, I would have said yes. Right. I was just so busy at the moment. I couldn't really think about everything yeah. clear, you know, fully. And then, and then the person never followed up with me. So some people in the wonder, why does this person not follow up with me? So do it, do the follow-up right again, nice and casual, no pressure, right. To say, Hey, you know, we talked about this, right. So, you know, are you interested? Did you want to move forward with that? You know, and then they may say, yeah, I do want to move forward with that. Thank you for following up with me. You need to follow up hundred percent. And again, if the person at the meeting just said, you know, no, I don't think I'm interested in the time. Uh, then you don't necessarily want to come up week later and say, hey, by the way, da da da, right? They really said they're not interested, right? You say, okay, well, not a problem. Uh, you know, do you mind if I, you know, send you an email once a month just with some latest information in the, uh, mm-hmm. in the field and stuff like that? Okay, that's fine. You know, so then, you know, then the top of mind, right? And eventually, maybe when they are ready to, yeah. to get yeah. something that you offer, they're going to remember you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, right? um, Tammy, a quick question. After the meeting, um, how quickly do you do the follow-up? Three days, four days? What would you recommend? Actually, I do it immediately. The following day? No, no, no. Immediately after the meeting. Ah, okay. Right. I'm always going to say, you know, it was a pleasure to meet you today, right? And then, um, you know, as we talked about, you know, I attached the information for you. And then let me know if you have any questions and if you're interested in, in going forward, right? Or I might just say, you know, let me know if you have any questions. And then if they don't get back to me after a week, then I'll do another one. But typically I right away after the meeting, immediately I will send them that follow-up email. Again, thank you for their time. They took the time out of their day to meet with you, right? And that, like a little recap of the, you know, of the session, right? Or uh, maybe they wanted to send you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so immediately I would do the immediately follow-up. And then and then a week later, if the person, you know, if the person had something to think about it, then a week later you want to be doing that. But typically I find immediately afterwards is when I, again, you know, it was a pleasure to meet you right in that. And uh, here's the information because typically that's what they want. They want to get more information about it. Mm-hmm. right? And so then that can, you know, can help them. Uh, and then we're going to have the, the last stage in the process, which is not even necessarily the, um, 
but between these two things, whether it be in the meeting or the follow-up, then is when you're going to get the uh, sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it takes an average of five to seven touches to uh, get a new client. That's the average. Like some people have heard different numbers. Uh, that's the numbers that, you know, I've heard and being an average, it can be, um, again, it has to be that you're in your target market. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you know, going after target market, then maybe it's going to take you seven to 20, right? Now, five to seven is an average, which means some person like, you know, they may see you for the first time. Like I went to an event a few weeks ago and the lady was, you know, had this uh, anti-wrinkle cream or whatever. And I'm like, yes, I want to get some of that. Sometimes it will happen at the very one. Sometimes it'll take two, take two. And sometimes the person, it could take 20. Like when I was a financial advisor, I had this, this young fellow and um, it took me a year and finally got him as a client, right? And so, you know, it can, but if you add up the whole in-betweens, you know, but again, the mailers thing is your target market. If you're, if you're, if you're messaging the people who are, have the highest need or desire for what you offer and everything else is going the right way, you should have a good ratio, right? Of, of meetings to sales. If you're having like 20 meetings to getting one new client, you know, there's got to be something you change, you know, for, for your meetings. Um, I find when you're reaching out to people for typically, like for me, to typically 10 to 30%. So if you reach out to 30 people, um, you should get three, you know, three people at least. Yeah. Three to nine people who accept your invitation. Mm -hmm. And that, right? And you typically should get a meeting with three people. So typically out of say 30 people, you should get, uh, you know, three people, 10% agreeing to a meeting. And out of a meeting, then you should get at least one client. Mm -hmm. Right? And if it's not, then come and see me as a coach. I'm going to put you on the path. <laughs> of course, to, of course. Right? Because why would you want to have 20 meetings to get one client? Exactly. No, right? no, no. There is right. something to change or maybe your mindset. And that's why as a business coach, you would help them to, uh, to change that, uh, to get more um, efficient in a way and uh, close the sale and get a successful business. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, target market, um, you know, uh, prospecting, you know, getting the right people to the meetings, booking enough meetings, and then at the meetings, following a good format where you're, you know, getting to know the person a little bit on the personal level. And then you're going to, you know, uh, you know, qualifying them right, and then you're presenting what you do in a certain way, doing the proper follow up, and then so on. And you should have good ratio. So this is what I love helping people with. But I help people with all sort of things, right? Mm -hmm. Some of them they just CRM. What is that? Okay, well let me help you get a CRM set up. It can be kind of complicated, actually, right? Oh, so this can yeah. be something, right? Some people are even before that. Some people where uh, I had a young lady who just graduated from college in a certain program, and she wants to start her own business. Okay, so we have we start right from the foundation of the seven P's of marketing. So first of all, what products or services are you going to offer mm -hmm. specifically like a la carte in bundles? And then what is your pricing going to be? Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, place where you can offer it, uh, you know, people, you need yourself, you need someone else in there. What is the process are going to go through physical evidence of what you do? Mm -hmm. Physical evidence, that's where your website comes in handy, which we also provide websites. If you don't have one, let me know. And then you want to be doing the promotion part of it. That's one of one of the seven pieces of marketing. So you got to do the, all the other things first, right? Um, yeah, that's um, that's great. So to uh, wrap up, target market, CRM, prospecting, preparation, meetings, follow up, and then you get the sale and you get a successful business. Anything else you want to mention, Tammy, before uh, you talk about your website? Yeah, sure. So I just want to go to the next uh, slide okay. here, actually, where I've actually broken them down into a little bit more here. So just uh, to give people a little bit more uh, idea. So uh -huh. for target market, think about the occupation, if that's okay. important. Mm -hmm. Okay, think about the income level. Yeah, right. Again, if you're some some businesses, let's say, for example, no frills, they want to go after low income market. And they people think, well, I'm not gonna make not a lot of money going after the low income market. Well, not necessarily. It's a low volume. Right. And uh, again, family status, is that important? A health? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. So if you want to oh, yeah. mm -hmm. be helping people that have depression versus uh, being overweight or whatever, uh, their housing situation, does that matter? So if you're a, a, um, a uh, real estate agent, you want to help people who want to do, a, you know, rent to own or just a rental or they want to buy a house, they want to sell a house. Uh, if, does gender matter? 
and it not necessarily that only one gender could benefit from it, but mm-hmm. like say a female financial advisor or even like a female coach may just want to say, you know, they have more in common with, with women. They just want to specialize in that. Mm-hmm. So that could be something. Um, and then the age range. Yeah. Okay. So here's again, a recap of the target market. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are a bunch of different CRMs. So we okay. use PipeDrive. I like PipeDrive because you can create multiple pipelines. Mm-hmm. So you can have, you know, because we have several referral groups and we have guest speaking clients, we have private coaching clients, we have website clients. And so I can make a pipeline with each of them and then move people across the stages, right? Uh, so then CRM, so then just as a little recap here, making notes after your communication, syncing with your email phone, integrating with your email marketing. Uh, accounting software, you can also integrate that. Mm-hmm. So that's what's and invoices and then other. Okay, so here is going to be your prospecting. So again, where do the people spend their time? Where can you find them? Okay, how are you going to approach them? What's the method? Is it better to give them a phone call versus a social media connection request versus an email mm-hmm. versus going to a networking event? You know, what are you going to say and what are you going to write? Again, I help with all of these different things, mm-hmm. you know, all stages of this. Okay, and then preparing for your meeting. Uh, so reviewing your social media profiles, uh, your past communications with them as well. Make sure you read those ones. Uh, read the notes um, again in your CRM. Yeah. Uh, practice the flow of the meeting in writing and verbally. So after you've been doing meetings for quite a while, you probably don't have to necessarily practice them out loud. But if you're new to it, then you probably should uh, mm-hmm. practice You know what you're going to say and the potential flow of the meetings. And then in your meetings, general conversation, You know, tell me about your business ask some questions to qualify them, ask for the sale. This is something that also a lot of people, they lose business on, Mm -hmm. right? I have one client as one of my referral groups and I say, you know, when you're in a meeting with the other members, like, do you actually ask them if they want it to get this from you? And she's like, no. Okay, well, you, you, if you don't ask, you don't get, okay? (laughs) Would you like to get this, right? So you can't be shy about it, right? Otherwise you're not going to make any money, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, And then again, close the sale or the next slide. And then your follow-up, either to close the sale or just increase the touch points if they just want to think about it. Uh, yeah. And that's that's it. So just a nice little recap there. Hopefully that was helpful for everybody. Yes, very helpful. Thank you. And sometimes we, we forget all that and it's nice to get back to the basics, you know, and just think, okay, well, where, what is my target market? How do they uh, interact? Uh, how can I interact with them? Um, prospecting and practicing. And if it doesn't work, maybe the script is not, um, I'm not going to say well-written, but not well-targeting, right? So, uh, um, yeah, very interesting. Thank you very much, Tammy, for, uh, for this uh, great presentation. And tell us about your website. You're launching it today. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. I said about 100 hours have gone into this website so far, which is my work. I had a developer help me as well. Uh, our current website, still, I'm, I'm really happy with our current website, but I wanted to add in more functionality. So I want to be able to offer more things to entrepreneurs to help them grow their businesses. So our new website has a business directory. So now uh, visitors to our website can find your business. So if you get a business uh, business directory listing, there's all a couple different levels of, of listings you can get. Uh, you can get just your contact information. You can you know get photos, videos, social media links contact form, post your events, you know, offer discounts, whole range of different things you can do. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to have you check that out. So please do tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh So Tuesday, October the 11th, uh, check out our website. And of course, any day after that to uh, put your listing up, Uh, but we definitely, we have other memberships coming up as well. Right. So the other memberships are going to feature a different level of directory listing access mm-hmm. to all of our, the premium version of all of our networking events in a year. And we have two events every month, mostly virtual, some in person though. We're starting to do some in person as well, which we provide all the food and beverages. And members also now have access to our health and dental insurance plan. So if you are interested in getting health and dental benefits, but maybe you don't qualify because you have medical conditions, it doesn't matter. Okay. You do not have to ask any, answer any medical questions to get in our health and dental insurance plan. Uh, They're going to base your premiums on your age, your gender, your family status, and then you can get 
a lot of things, you know, prescriptions, dental, eyeglasses, uh, massage, chiropractor, you know, psychotherapist, wow. uh, whatever, right. Whatever you need, tra who's travel insurance as well. Uh -huh. So yeah, really excited about this. I've been wanting to do this now for over a year and we finally made it happen. So whether, and before we were just mostly offering our referral group memberships, but now people can get another type of membership uh, that's not a referral membership and they can still take advantage of all these benefits. Fantastic. So have a look, check tomorrow uh, Tammy's website. And then if you want help, if you need help to uh, grow your business, contact her uh, since she's a business coach. She will help you uh, to close the sales and, uh, and achieve your goals. So thank you very much, Tammy, for the presentation. Come back anytime. And uh, my next uh, guest uh, will be Christian Massé. Yes, next week, um, Christian is back and he's going to talk about crucial communication tips to build communities. So uh, don't miss out next, uh, next week. And uh, if you've missed any uh, previous talk shows, uh, well, don't uh, worry about it. Just have a look on uh, my YouTube channel, Phoenix Coaching and Training. Uh, subscribe, click on the little bell so you get all the notifications. And uh, so you won't miss any anymore. So uh, thank you again, uh, Tammy. And uh, well, I'll see you next week uh, with Christian. So thank you again, Tammy. <laughs> thank you so much, Isabel. A pleasure to be here. And we'll talk to you again soon. Oh, yes. And uh, hope you come back. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. <laughs>